Um, as Joe already announced, um, I'm not Baltazar Oswald, but Chris Eberle. I don't work for SBB, but I'm a Red Hatter. Um, but our colleague had to fly home yesterday to Switzerland. Um, and I'm working actually with SBB for quite a long time now um, on OpenShift and other topics, so for more than a year. So I said, no worries, I will step in and I will take the session here. Um, so first of all, who is Swiss Railways? Clear, Swiss, they are in Switzerland and um, they do rail business, so they run trains um, for goods as well as persons. And actually they are plus minus the, the only rail company, you could say they have a monopoly there um, in, in Switzerland. And we are working with them on OpenShift for quite a while now. And I, actually I want to talk is about how they went to OpenShift or why they were thinking about OpenShift City and what were the steps um, which led them there. So about Swiss Railways itself, a company has around 30,000 employees, around 2,000 of them in IT. Um, they are as well a software development shop, so they have a few hundred uh, software developers. They do a lot of custom development in-house as well. Um, what I want to start with is actually a talk about DevOps in combination with provider management. So what SBB actually did, or how they started a couple of years ago, is that they introduced, I think it was around 10 years ago or something, where they started to introduce so-called shared platforms, um, where multiple applications and products could, or projects could put their applications on. Um, shared platforms for IBM WebSphere, for example, shared platforms for databases, and so on and so on. So they built up these big shared platforms so that all um, the, the, the projects in SPB could put their applications there. There was one problem with these shared platforms, which is the isolation between the applications. So it's really, it was a technical limitation which they could not really resolve um, network-wise, CPU-wise, that they could not really isolate the stuff from each other. And what they did then, as a consequence, is to introduce processes to mitigate these risks. So you have big change management processes, you have Word templates, which um, are used for the handover from artifacts um, from, um, from different stages to each other. So they really introduced um, a big process machinery, you could say, for, for change management and to mitigate these risks of applications affecting each other. And this, as a consequence, certainly broke up development and operations into different silos because in the middle you have these big heavyweight processes which um, just separate the two of them. As well, you had um, the interface between dev and ops was very technology specific. So for every technology you had own dev and ops teams. You had an ops team for WebSphere, one for database, one for every technology. And what SPB did then is they said, okay, we are going to outsource um, some of the operations. So the infrastructure opera operations, for example, is outsourced, the platform operations is outsourced to, to any provider. And the impact of this is certainly that the gap between dev and ops even gets big, bigger because it's two different companies, uh, probably two different, or I mean, we have, we talk Swiss German um, in Switzerland, nobody else does. Nobody else understands us. If we have to talk English, it's getting a bit tricky. So if all these things um, are, are coming as well into play if you outsource things to a provider. Um, and what they did then, because the gap was so big, they said, okay, we need to have an ops team as well in SPB itself. So um, they call it operations management. And what does operations management do? They sit between the provider ops and the development and uh, coordinate the activities there. This is what, uh, what these guys do. So you have another hop or another ops which, which you're adding to the game here. And this is not enough certainly because usually you have um, multi-provider strategies. So you have multiple provider uh, providing different pieces or operations for different pieces of, of your infrastructure. And so this is what happened as well. You had, they had to manage different providers. For each technology still, you have an operations team. So it's not 
um, only the different companies you have to manage, the different providers, but as well per technology you have such operations teams. And I mean, if they wanted to introduce a change which affected some backend systems and some front end systems, they had to orchestrate these changes across multiple different operations teams, about, uh, across multiple different companies even. Um, and this can be very tricky. I mean, usually uh, when you release stuff, you have dependencies, you have to do things, uh, things in a certain sequence or in parallel. And to coordinate these things across um, different companies can be really, really tricky. We're still not at the end because um, <laughs> then providers start um, offshore, nearshore, or just shore certain parts of operations. So, for example, network operations was moved somewhere else. And then you even had to talk to even more um, parts and companies, and you had even more different languages and, and cultures involved in the operations of a single platform. So, what's wrong here? <laughs> yes, you have a little bit of def, and then you have ops, 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 ops. Something is wrong here. So, uh, this is what they realized as well. I mean, it, it um, kills your innovation in the end. Um, you're very slow in, in releasing things and so on. And what they actually did um, to get the results, of course, or with Red Hat, is to introduce OpenShift. Um, and they introduced OpenShift for, on the one hand side, development of applications, and on the other hand, for operations of applications as well. So OpenShift provides, on the one hand side, the isolation of applications from each other, which allowed them to remove these heavyweight processes around um, and build so-called DevOps teams. The DevOps teams, they are responsible for an application end-to-end. -end. So from the development into, uh, over the whole staging into production and maintenance of the application. They are end-to-end -end responsible for um, the applications. And what they as well did, so they changed it a little bit, so they introduced a horizontal split of responsibility. SPB itself is responsible for the application and its operations, and the providers are responsible for operating the base platform, so OpenShift. You can still have multi-provider strategies, so you can still have multiple providers providing you an OpenShift platform, which you can use. Um, as well, certainly, um, OpenShift brings a lot of benefits in automation of, the, of operational tasks, so operations getting smaller and smaller. Well, that's the plan, actually. And one other big thing is that you do not have to have multiple different teams anymore for the different technologies, because the, the interface between DevOps and OpenShift Ops is not about technology. Not, it's not about, I want to host a JEE server. I want to host an OJS. This is um, not important anymore because it's all containerized and it, it doesn't really, the technology itself doesn't really matter anymore. So the, the interface is much, much simplified. So what SPB has right now, um, they run stuff on premise, they run stuff in public cloud as well on OpenShift. Um, and this brings me to the use cases kind of. Uh, so one use case we are currently working on is the SPB mobile app. Actually, it's uh, one of the most popular apps in, in Switzerland. It's always under the top five ranked apps in Switzerland. Um, there is around, I think, a million downloads or something. And the backend of this app, this is uh, probably the, the first use case, is running an, on, on AWS. So uh, everything customer facing will be running on AWS, and um, other systems like backend systems are running on the internal cluster. Um, this is one of the use cases we are currently implementing. Then uh, the web shop is the next project which is coming. Actually, we have identified around 15 projects which we are going to put to OpenShift by, by the end of the year. That's the plan. And also they are currently defining their future technology stack. So they call it their cloud technology stack, um, consisting of Spring Boot, then Redis database, and so on. So they really define a set of technologies they want to use to build their next generation of applications and are kind of um, hardening these things on, on OpenShift now.
that was it. Thank you very much.